Paul McGee with YETicket.com. Well, it's Oscar time, the Academy Awards, and I have my two favorite critics here. We're going to do some predictions and talk about who should win and who we want to win. But first of all, let me introduce you to Paul Levine. He's a film critic, and not only that, he also owns Famous Faces Talent Agency. How are you doing today, Paul? Terrific. Did it terrific. Good. And I'm here with also with Hap Ernstein or Harris Ernstein. He's hey. a famous film critic. And how you doing today? Ray, can't wait for the Oscars Sunday. Oh, I can't wait either. So let's talk about what the first category I'm going to choose, and that is an actor in a supporting role nominees. Now, I hope you got your list who you feel will win or who you want to win. And let me give you the nominees. Sasha Baron Cohen for the trial of the Chicago 7. Daniel Kalua for Judas and the Black Messiah. Leslie Odom Jr. from One Night in Miami. Paul Racy, Sound of Metal. Lakeith Stanfield for Judas and the Black Messiah. Let's start with you, Hat. Who you feel will win and who you want to win. Well, here's the problem. Daniel Kaluuya is not a supporting actor in this movie. He's I the lead. Agree. But since he was put into the supporting category, he's going to win. And normally, being up against one of his co-stars, they would tend to lock each other out. But I think everyone's going to vote for Daniel Kaluuya for that movie. And I don't have any problem with it. I, I think he did a heck of a job. I'll be pleased when he wins and he's going to. Well, you know what? I'm going to agree with you on yeah, that. I feel then I, then I must Kalua. be wrong. I have to change my mind then. <laughs> well, I feel Daniel Kalua is the lead in the film, but I don't know why they got him for supporting. I don't, I don't understand that at all. But also, I like Sasha Baron Cohen, too, in The Trial of Chicago 7. But Daniel Kalua did much more work in the film because he is the lead in the film. Yep. I did. And I like Leslie Odom Jr. in One Night in Miami playing Sam Cooke. He did a fabulous job in that. And, you know, and Sound of Metal, I like Paul Racy too, but I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to pick Daniel Kaluuya. What do you say about that, Paul? I say Daniel Kaluuya wins automatically. I think uh, his performance, again, it was to me, was a, a main star, a supporting star, but I agree with you guys. So far, so good. <laughs> all right. Okay, great. Either we're all right or we're all wrong. That's right. Uh, let's go into the next category, Actress in a Leading Role nominee. Now, this is a leading role for Actress. And okay. the nominees are Viola Davis in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Andra Day, the United States versus Billie Holiday, Vanessa Kirby for Pieces of a Woman, very good film, Frances McDermott, Nomadland, who the, the forerunner, and Carrie Mulligan, Promising young woman. Paul, let's start off with you. Who you think should win or who you want to win or who will win? Uh, to answer all three questions with one answer, I think Viola Davis. But that it was the most incredible role I've ever seen. Her. And I'm a big fan of Viola and so is my wife Barbara. And she won't miss anything that she does. So I, that's what I, I think. Every one of those gals are, 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 are great. Uh, but I think Viola is going to steal it. Oh, okay. And half. What well, do you think? Sorry, Paul, but you're wrong. Um, I, I think Frances McDormand is my favorite of the year. I'm a big Nomad Land fan, as you'll see with other categories. But Viola Davis and Frances McDormand have won too much recently. The Oscars like to spread the wealth around. Andre Day, Vanessa Kirby, a little too new to the to the industry. I don't think they've, they've built up the the following and the friendships yet. I think much uh, overlooked in the past, and she gives one heck of a performance as the promising young woman. The winner is going to be Carrie Mulligan. Wow. That's how you feel about that, huh? Well, you know, you're right. Andrea Day and Vanessa Kirby have not really built up their friends and, and, and notices in it. But it I really enjoyed I really enjoyed Vanessa Kirby and Pieces of a Woman. She really carried that whole movie. But Andra Day for her first performance playing Billie Holiday, 
I thought that was an exceptional performance. And I will agree, right now, Frances McDermott is really the least. She didn't won almost all the other awards for her acting in this film. But, and I remember when you was telling me about this film, Hap, and I looked at it, and I said I was not excited about it as you were. Right. But I'm more excited about Andrew Day, but also excited about Vanessa Curry. But who will win? I'm going to say it will be Francis McDermott, who I want to win, Andrew Day. What do you say, Paul? I'm still going with Viola. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, good. That's great. Now, the next category is actor in a leading role. And here are the nominees. We got Riz Ahmed for Sound of Metal. Chadwick Boseman, Mom Rainey's Black Bottom. Anthony Hopkins, The Father. Gary Owen, Mank. Steve Yoon, Minari. Well, I'm going to start this one off. Well, unfortunately, for the rest of the actors like Riz and Anthony and Gary and Steven, they have no chance because Chadwick Boseman will win this nomination. And I feel that he was one of the better actors. But when I saw The Father when Anthony, when Anthony Hopkins, I said, at his age, and he's really acting, uh, and, and, and he really gave a, gave, a, gave a great performance in The Father. Ooh, I was the man. Now, Riz Amid, I, I liked him in Sound of Metal, but I got to go with Chad with Bozeman because one, he died. Two, he, he really held that film up. Ma Rainey, back, black bottom. So I'm picking Chance McBoseman. He will win, and I want him to win. What do you say about that, Paul? Oh, I, I agree. I was just thinking that because of, it is the Academy, and the Academy does little things that the other, the other awards don't do. Um, and believe me, Chad Wick deserves, <laughs> deserves it, uh, the, the award again. Um, again, Anthony Hopkins just blew me away, uh, but I'm going to check it. Okay. Yeah. Well, kind of agree here. Now, really, if you've ever seen the play of Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, uh, <laughs> the part of Levy is really a supporting role. But Chaswick Bowman took it and ran with it and turned it into a lead. Even if he had not passed away, uh, he'd be up there for the award. But posthumous awards, the Oscar loves them. It's going to be Chadwick Boseman. If I had a vote, I would vote for, uh, um, oh, sorry, uh, for Anthony Hopkins. But um, Chadwick has got it. You can bet the yeah. mortgage on this one. Yeah. He, he, and and, and there were many other uh, of the other award shows and companies, whatever you want to call it, he has won them. He's won many of them so far. And he didn't even come to pick them up. Didn't, get the, didn't pick up the awards at all. Plus, wife, friends, I guess, I don't know. But uh, condolences to him and his family, unfortunately. All right, next category is the animated feature. Ready for your cartoons to get on? Here we go. The nominees are Onward. Uh, and the next one's Over the Moon. The next is a, a Sean, the Sheep movie. Next is Soul. And the final one is Wolf Walkers. Well, I'm going to start that one off. So, that's it. Going to win it all. I love this film. It was great. Disney, Pixar. Who, who in this category can beat them? Okay, Onward is a Pixar, well, Disney, but I don't know if it's Pixar. It's Pixar, too. Yeah, it's Pixar also. But so, for me, that's all I got to say. Pat? I think you're right. I hate to say that, you know, because I never like to agree with you. Um, Soul is not only going to win this category, I think it's also got the best score. Uh, it's very creative. Pixar does amazing work. This one has been picking up every award in sight for animation. I don't see how it could possibly lose. You can bet the farm on this one, too. Soul. Paul? Um, my vote also goes to Soul. But I really enjoyed, are you ready for this one? Over the Moon, mm. or the hand-drawn 
uh, animation, the colors and, and the sound of the film is just... Yeah, yeah. If Soul wasn't on there, I would go with Over the Moon. And not too many people saw that movie. No, not too many didn't see that at all. But I saw every last one of these. And, and Wolf Walkers, too. Uh, it was on Apple Plus. It was, it was very good, too. I really enjoyed that. Well, let's go to the next category for directing. Now, you know, over the last few months, I really, I mean, I've heard buzz of directors, but the only buzz I heard about directors, oh, a woman hasn't won yet. And things like that. And they, no one really talked about how extraordinary a director has did a movie for from last year. So here are the nominees. We got the Another Round by uh, Thomas Vindenberg, Mank, David Fincher, Minari, Lee Isaac Chung, No Man Land, Chloe Zhao, and Promising Young Woman, Imro Fennell. Paul, who you feel is going to win this category in directing? I wish Adam Sorkin's name was on there. <laughs> who? I said, I wish. Adam Sorkin's name was on there, but it's not. Yeah. I, I'm not familiar with the movie. The only one on, on the list I'm not familiar with is another round. But I, I, I think it's a, it's a wild guess. And, you know, there are surprises. I think David Fincher might take it for me. For me? Right. Did you enjoy me? I like, I like movies about movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't one of my favorites. What do you say, Hap? Well, you know, the Oscars do like movies about movies. So Mank, Mank has a, a shot at it. But, uh, I think it's going to be a big night for Nomadland. And again, from all the preliminary awards so far, I think Chloe Zhou, uh, she's going to pick up a couple of Oscars here. Uh, certainly, she is going to get the Best Director uh, Award. I'm with you, Paul, that uh, Aaron Sorkin, you know, really uh, should be in the, in the group. Um, also, Emerald Fenerel, uh, making it a, her debut movie, uh, does a heck of a job. Thinks she's going to get the screenplay award, but uh, I think it's another Beth the Farm, Chloe Zhao. Well, you know, I uh, I kind of agree with both you guys, but I think Emerald Fennell is going to win it. And uh, out of this <laughs> list, I would like to see her win it because uh, it was a very good film, and it got a lot of buzz. And it was a very interesting uh, uh, story about that young lady. And I really think Emerald Fennell is going to win it. Now, again, no mad land. Oh, she's been getting all of it. People love Chloe Zoe, but uh, I, I feel it's going to be Emerald Fennell. So this is the first category. We, ha we three have three different picks. That's good. Yeah, that's great. All oh, right. For me yeah. making winning the money. Good. All right, now, next category is Actress in a Supporting Role. And here are the nominees. Maria Bakalova for Barack Subsequent Movie Film Delivery of the Prestigious Bride to American Regime to Make Benefit Once Glorious Nation of Pakistan. Next is Glenn Close. Close for a Hillbilly Elegy. Next is Olivia Colman for The Father. Amanda Sinfrey for Mank and Young Jong Young for Minari. Paul, go ahead. Sound like you wanted to make a comment. Yeah. Um, I would have liked to see. Well, I, I love Glenn Close, and she, she did a terrific job. However, uh, uh, Amy Adams, which did just as good a job, if not better, it was, wasn't even nominated. So right. she's going to win. But I have a funny feeling that Maria is going to take it again. It's, Seems like that's where you've been running with the other awards. Mm, yeah, well, she was very good in it. Hap, what do you say? Well, I like Glenn Close too, but I think she's terrible in this movie. It's a big caricature. I don't know what she's doing in the category. And really not a good performance. I think Maria Bakalova is the best thing about the Borat movie, but I think there's enough people that are offended by the movie to vote for anything that the movie has to do with it. Um, Amanda Seyfried also. Uh, just to be nominated is honor enough because she is, doesn't belong in the category. It's absolutely going to Yu Jong Yoon, the fabulous grandmother of Minari. And, and Minari really doesn't have much chance of anything except this category. Everyone who likes Minari 
and I like it a lot, is going to vote for her. Uh, you know what? I got to agree with you, Hal. I feel you know, Young Jung Jun for Minori will win this category. I really enjoyed her performance in this. Now, I did love Maria Bakalova, but again, <laughs> like you say, many people felt this film and sold it in many different ways. But that's why I like the film. Right, I wanted right. to see that type of realism. That's what it was trying to do. Maria Bakalova people. was great. I thought she did a great role. But Academy Awards, the voters are going to go with Minori Young. Young, Young, Young. That's who they're going to go Say with. Say that five times fast. Really, that was fast, wasn't it? <laughs> All right. Let's get to the next category. And that's going to be, wow, the last one is just going to be uh, Picture of the Year. Ooh. Ooh, that's right. Best picture. Now, the three of us, we've seen many movies in 2020. And of course, some movies we've seen, like for me, they're not on this list. I'm really shocked, but I didn't vote for them. So here we go with the nominees. The first is The Father. Second is Judas and the Black Messiah. Next is Mank. Next is Minori. Nomad Land, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and finally, The Trial of the Chicago 7. And let me start that off. Like I said, there's some films on here that got left off that I wanted to see. But of all, but of these nominations, the best film for me that I truly enjoyed was Judas and the Black Messiah. And I feel... That film really opened up a lot of people's eyes about what happened at that time. I was a young man. I was in high school when that happened. Then later on, I got to meet the family. And not only that, uh, it was very personal for me. I saw that when the FBI and the Chicago police went in there and murdered these people for trying to do good. And it was very emotional for me. Minority, minority, that got to me also. These young people from Korea trying to make it. <coughs> Excuse me. No man land. Nah, I couldn't get that excited about a woman using the toilet in a bucket. I've done that before myself. But anyway, promising young woman. Well, it was different. I enjoyed it, but what did it accomplish? But the end, you got to see it. What it did accomplish. Sound of metal. I really enjoyed that because that's a different story and about this young man trying to come grips with himself but the chicago the, the trial of the chicago 72 is emotional for me again i was a young man when that was going on and seeing that black panther chained up in in, in real life and then on the, in this film again i've seen other films about the trial of chicago 7 but this was a more realistic version of it but again i gotta go with judas and the black messiah i love that film like i said very emotional for me go ahead Hap. Well, if I had a vote, because my single favorite movie of the year was The Trial of Chicago 7, uh, in the same way, I guess you're talking now, I think my entire political awakening, uh, I can pinpoint to the Democratic Convention of 1968. And that, of course, is the, the aftermath of it, that trial. Uh, but, you know, with Aaron Sorkin missing out for Best Director nomination, it definitely taints the likelihood of that winning. Uh, so it will get my vote, but I guarantee you that Nomadland is the film of the moment. It really captures what's going on in the country at this point, the people losing their jobs, losing their homes, uh, being assigned to their, their cars or v RVs, and becoming uh, nomads. I think it's a very powerful film that the Academy is definitely going to go for. Yeah, and I totally agree with you. That's what it's about. But I don't think many people saw it that way when they saw this movie. From some people that I spoke to, you know, people who are not professional film goers or just regular people, they just couldn't get it. They couldn't understand mm -hmm. that. But you hit it right on the head. That's what it was totally about. Go ahead, Paul. Well, the, uh, my favorite movie, the one I hope wins, and I'm not going to even discuss the other movies. They're all great movies. Trial of the Chicago 7 was my 
my favorite film of the of the year. So three times, and I'll watch it again and again. There's so much in that that um, I just don't want to look anywhere else. What film is that? The Triangle of the Chicago Seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, I couldn't understand you. So. Oh, okay. But anyway, so you feel that film should win, and that's what you want to win. It will be a surprise if it does, but that's what I want to win. Yeah, it will. And as as half stated, Nomad Land right now is the talk in the industry right now, being the best and things like that. And it, and he also hit it on the head what it's all about. But the trial of Chicago Seven, it was very emotional, not just for me, half also. And you're right, it's emotional for you too, man, to see what went on in the justice system in 1968. And if the Oscars had a category for best ensemble, which they've been talking about for years, having done the ensemble of the trial of the Chicago Seven, Aaron Sorkin got amazing actors together and orchestrated them beautifully. Great acting yeah, in that yeah. movie. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Well, any other comments about the Oscars before we close out? Well, it's going to be a strange uh, ceremony. It's going to be very distant. It's going to be in several different locations. Uh, it's going to seem kind of canned. Uh, so I suspect that the uh, ratings will be down. Most of these movies are not, there's not a single real blockbuster in the, in the group. And that's what tends to get people watching. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to be glued to it, but uh, I bet you most people won't. Well, I'm going to be glued to it because they have a few nom nominees in here that I, I really love. But you got to realize this too. Block, many blockbusters don't get nominated. They really don't. Of course. And, they, and they usually don't, a lot of them don't win. Few of them over the, over the years have, like My Fair Lady, those type of movies back then. Uh, but they really they don't get, they don't really win the Oscar. But you know, I, will admit, I will admit this this is going to be an unusual award show. That's why I got to watch it. What about you, Paul? I watch it good, bad, or otherwise, and I haven't missed one yet. Matter of <laughs> fact, I was at the Academy Awards twice in the early days. Oh, wow. And you got to hang out with some superstars back then, right? I had the best seats in the house. You know why? Because we stood up, and then when somebody uh, has to go to the bathroom or something, they have to have somebody take over that seat. So I would sit there for maybe one award, the person comes back. And then if somebody else gets up, I, that's the way it was. it was. It was a lot of fun. Oh, wow. I sat next to a lot of famous stars, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, you know me, I would have talked to them. <laughs> you, know Definitely. You, probably, you probably would bring your camera. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, hey, well, thanks, guys. Uh, first of all, have, tell us, how can we see your work, uh, your reviews and things like that? I know you're on the radio and what newspaper. Tell us about that. Well, I'm on WJNO Radio. It's 1290 on the AM dial. And each week I talk about that week's openings and review them. And then it sort of plays uh, sort of haphazardly throughout the weekend. Uh, I also write for a website called palmbeachartspaper.com. Uh, a lot of the writers who left the Palm Beach Post when they were uh, uh, whittling away the staff started this website. We do a much better job of covering the arts and, and the films than the paper does. And uh, those are the main places you can see my work. Oh, great. And you, Paul, I know you work for a newspaper. Yes, uh, Florida's oldest entertainment newspaper. It's called the Around Town News. It used to be Around Town Newspapers. They used to have like for every, uh, we only, they only do one, one, one paper now. So I'm the movie critic of Around Town News. And again, like I say, your own famous faces. So if you want to, you're a young actor or an old actor or actress, contact Paul. He can help you out. And me, I only get him here at your entertainment ticket. Been a film critic for over 10 years, oh, much longer than that, actually. And uh, I really enjoy it. And I love movies. I love entertainment. So that's why I'm still in it. But again, I'm going to. out of life. Go to a movie. I know, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you, fellas. Much success, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you very much. Watch the Oscars this Sunday. That's right.
Oscars this Sunday. This is your entertainment ticket. Latest and greatest movie.